I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. You see what's going on now on Capitol Hill with the second day, and I guess, I guess they're getting ready for the, the fourth vote to, to uh, secure the Speaker of the House, and it appears that Kevin McCarthy is having a real tough time of it. There were three votes on yesterday, and two of those votes he got 203 votes. And on the third vote, he only got 202 votes as one through a congressperson from Florida decided to go with the 19 so-called rebels or whatever it is that they're being called. But can I share something with you? What I want to do is I want to take you behind the scenes of what's going on in the GOP. Will you let me do that? Lend me your ears for just a second, and I promise not to inflict myself upon you any further. But let's go behind the scenes. It looks as if it's just a bunch of wrangling, a, a number of people got their personal fetishes that they got their, you know, they want chairmanship, so they want this, or they want concessions, they want to be able to have a one-man or five-man rule to move the speaker, if, and, and so forth and so on. But... It, and, and that's what's being reported mainly both in the liberal and the conservative news. But I want to take you to the truth about what's really happening uh, behind the scenes of the GOP. It really is about Kevin McCarthy. You know, it's not about Scott Perry. It, it's not about Jim Jordan. You know, it, it, it isn't about them. Let me tell you what's going on. It, that the party, the, 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 the GOP, the Democrat Party, um, Oh, they only do white. By that, I mean they're mainly a white and, if you will, and not in a negative way, shrinking party in America. And because they are mainly white and they can't get right, the GOP cannot attract um, even Latinos in a large sense, or especially African Americans, who definitely ain't going to become GOP or Republican. And so what you see fighting, the fighting is about, it isn't about Kevin McCarthy, and it isn't about, you know, Scott Perry. It isn't about, it's about the fact that the GOP is fighting for his life because it's a shrinking white party. And they have got to establish a, a, a kind of platform uh, to sustain them in order to be able to, to survive. And, and let me say this about the GOP party, if you don't mind, the Republican party. Uh, part of the reason why they are a shrinking, mainly white party is because they have, in many ways, they're biblical. Now, I'm not saying they're saints. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not, even, I'm not saying they're righteous. I'm not saying that. But they are biblical and they are, if you will, they are constitutional, if you must. But they are shrinking. And, 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 and I say this about the GOP party, not only are they biblical and constitutional, but in many ways they are truthful in as much as we have to understand what the biblical context and what the constitutional foundation of America stands for. And they are standing in the way of this massive wave of unbiblical, if you will, legislation this unconstitutional or overconstitutional legislation, and that's what the fight is all about. And in many ways, if you look at it from from a, the, the what is called as the rebels or the twenty holdouts point of view, you might want to understand and throw your hat in the ring with them, and not that you're throwing your hat against uh, 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 Jim, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy. But when you understand, there are some basic and foundational things that are happening in our constitutional legislative, if you will, America that are unbiblical, that are unconstitutional, and that are racist through and through. But the other thing is, is that the Republican Party is a white party. Now, the Democrats, on the other hand, are made up of anti-Bible and they, that is a large premise of their foundation to actually do legislation and not to be afraid to walk up and be anti-Bible. Democrats have no problem with being anti, they call it progressive or whatever it is, but they have no problem with being anti-Bible. They have no problems for a quest for ministry or minority or political, if you will, reparations. The Democrat Party is about political reparations for minorities. As a result, to get minorities to help them become a larger group, voting group, 
and to make sure that 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 minorities don't drift over and become Republican. So they're about political reparations. It's about everything they do is about political reparation. Now they give it all kinds of names about this, that, and the other. But when it boils down to it, it's, it's two things in particular. It's unbiblical or anti-biblical, what the Democrats do in their legislation, and it's also about minority political reparations. And so that's what's going on behind the scene. And you might want to step back and, and stop. You know, I even hit Sean Hannity last night. I was watching Sean last night, and he was railing against them, telling them they need to get to act together, and, they, and they're grandstanding and so forth. It isn't about that, Sean. It, it, it isn't. You're, mis, you're misreading the whole thing. This is a serious matter of anti-God, anti-biblical, if, if you will, and, and pro-minority reparations legislation. That's what it's all about. And the 20 holdouts are really holding out. Now, you say, well, Pastor Matt, I've never heard them say you, that they're you know, for the commandments. Or the, but no, this is, what, this is what's going on in America. And they're part of the white, uh, the, the fact that the, the, the GOP is mainly white and a shrinking party. And they're trying to, this may be the last stand. This, this Senate seat, I mean, this, this, this uh, speaker seat may be the last stand for the white GOP party. Otherwise, we're going to be taken over. I mean, by, they'll be burning by the Dem- Let me tell you something. You fool around with these Democrats. They'll have you burning Bibles. They're already on the precipice now of chastising anybody, ostracizing anybody who believes the Bible. And you better not talk about the Old Testament, the Democrats. They, 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 and they only use Jesus as a mascot. They don't really care the Democrats. They are as unbiblical as you can possibly be. So this, this, this fight, you see, may be the last stand of a constitutional America. It very well may be. And what the Democrats are calling constitutional, as opposed to what may be happening on January 6th, is because they think they got a louder voice and they are more for progressive, so-called progressiveness. That is, the main thing of the Democrats is racial legislation. I mean, you, you, everywhere you look, and, and it doesn't matter how they couch it, whether a transportation bill or, you know, and everywhere you look. And then they got like Pete Buttigieg, right, married to some other man named Chastity or something, as the secretary of transportation. Everywhere you look, they are either about radical Radical legis- racial, I'm sorry, racial recon- legislation. They are also Democrats. Also about unhinged using abortion as a uh, as a as a, if you will, sort of a sex pill, if you will. Uh, use abortion after you get pregnant. They want to be able to have, don't want to have the baby. So abortion is very 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 important to them. Uh, and then the other thing is homosexuality. The, Dem- the Democrats, all, all three of those are anti-biblical, all three of them. I mean, you, you, I'm not asking you to be a theologian and get down in the weeds of, you know, discerning the ethics of the Bible. But, but all the Democrats are, are solely and purely and completely uh, 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 anti-Bible, anti-God and pro, if you will, racial legislation as a way of political and minority reparations is what they're about. And the, 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 the GOP or the Republicans, this may be the last stand. This may be the last stand. And while, you know, I don't, I have no, no, no nothing nice. I want to say about Kevin McCarthy. I don't want to, I don't have, I'm not trying to defend him, but on the other hand, uh, it is really about him. It isn't about him. It's about saving a shrinking, and I don't say this in a, in a vicious, pejorative way. It's about saving a shrinking white, to some degree, constitutional, you know, constitutional party. And, you know, the Democrats are saying, well, I remember when, you know, the, uh, Republicans used to be this or that or the other. Uh, but this pendulum has swung so far by Democrats having, if you will, the, the the major urban centers of America, if you're a major city, Chicago, San Francisco, New York, you know, Los Angeles, they have the major urban areas. And in those major urban areas, they got a lot of minorities to blend in with the white Democrats 
who are anti-biblical, many of them, and most of them legislation for minority reparations, abortionists, right? Use abortion as birth control. And the Republicans, on the other hand, have the vast, if you will, rural areas, people like Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, even places in Texas, and well, Texas is becoming a very urban area as well. And so there's this competition. They call it red and blue states. All right, they want to give it that designation. I'm, going to, I'm not going to argue with that. But I, you need to understand what we are watching now is more than you got you to remove your biases. And Sean Hannity was really way off course last night. He was way off course last night uh, accusing the 20 that, uh, of being grandstanders. He was way off course last night, Sean. You were way off. You got to. You have to understand. There's something going on in the and and, and, and my concern. Well, well, my two cents where where I'm sticking out is I see the anti-biblical. Listen, these Democrats are anti-biblical up the wazoo. I mean, they, they, and their homosexuality and all that's anti-God from way back. And they 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 are they are pushing this. They're pushing it, and this may be the last stand. This may be the last stand for civility. This may be the last stand for biblical, if you will, any kind of biblical constitutional relevancy. This may be the very last stand. This may be Jesus' last stand. Well, let me say not. Let me not say that. What's going on now? And and um, and so I don't know how to resolve it. But I'll admit that I don't know. Well, let's just say that Kevin McCarthy should step down because. Whoever else steps up is Steve Scalise or Jim Jordan says he doesn't want it. I don't know that that to be true. Matt Gates would take it. I can tell you that right now. But that boy's under investigation for sexual molestation of a 16-year-old girl down there in uh, uh, down there in Florida somewhere. I don't know how, where that case is at these days. But I, this, how to resolve this? It, it's really going to take the wisdom of Solomon to resolve this. But what I want to do, what I'm trying to do here today, I'm telling everybody to back off these 20 people. Back off, Scott Perry. Back off. Back off of these persons that are. Uh, and Chip Roy said something the other yesterday on the floor that, you know, there, this isn't even a legislative body anymore. Once there been a really debate and an agenda debate on the floor that this that people just pass bills without any debate. Don't give you time to read them. A thousand page bill get written and dropped on the floor and they vote on it. And nobody reads it. Nobody knows what's in it. I think Chip Ross from Texas, if I'm not mistaken, this is, he was right about that. We, the constitutional privileges and, and priorities are now being swallowed up by all this minority legislation, all this bleeding heart for black people. And by the way, you know, ain't nobody on the planet. Listen, listen, ain't nobody on the planet that love black people more than I do. I, 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 and I, don't, I love them. I love them with the love of God. But all this bleeding hard all the time, all of this, and never giving black people the right direction. It's a misdirection. Never giving them the truth of what. Just give them more legislation. Give them more food stamps. Give them more black mayors. They'll be happy they see a black face on television, on the news. They'll be happy they see a black mayor somewhere. They'll be happy, 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 but never give them the truth. It's a misdirection. It's a scream is what it is. It's a ripoff. It's a, it's a flim flam. It's a bamboozlement. It's what it is that these Democrats are doing to black people, and they're just sucking it up. Put out that so-called Barack Hussein, the long-legged half-breed, half-baked Obama. Didn't do a doggone thing. Black people are worse now than they've ever been. So I think what we need to understand, and finally I'm going to let you go, so I figure you've heard enough of this so far. But I got just a couple other things I want to say, and then I won't inflict myself upon you any further. The money bags are about equal. I mean, that, there's as much money in the, re, in the GOP as there is a Democrat, the Republican. The, the money bag is about equal. They, they, they got a lot, but, they, they got, but the media platforms are very unequal. It's only Fox News out there and here in New York City got the New York Post uh, against, uh, actually the New York Post has a larger circulation, if you will, print circulation than the New York Times. But the media platforms, and mainly because most media platforms are owned by Jewish 
uh, 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 if you will, owners, corporations, owners. And so that's why you got so many media platforms. And only Fox News, well, you got some smaller. You got, you know, you got QAnon, you got One America News, you got this other boy out there that with that small program. But not, not, nothing compared to MSNBC and CBS and NBC and CNN and all that, the media platform. So the battle, the battle is raging. And I would say to you, I don't, I don't know I, what I do. I have, I have an explanation, but I don't, I don't know how to solve this. I don't, I, but I think we need to know the truth if how it's going to be solved. We need to know that uh, that what we're looking at, um, and, and, and you know, a lot of people use the term the browning of America. I don't think that's happening. I, I don't. I don't think so. And I, but I'll say this to the to the to the to the Republicans, and, and while there's nobody on this planet that loves black people as much as I do. I wake up every morning in Harlem. For the last 40 years, uh, I have lived in Harlem. At, at one point, not now, but at one point, I had the means to move to a, you know, a nice palatial house up in uh, Westchester County, you know, two, three stories, you know, with a, you know, a lot of space with a swimming pool. I could have done that years ago, but that would have been deserting my people. I wanted the young boys on the street with their pants down below their butt. I wanted to see them. I wanted them to see me out on the street every day in a suit and tie. I wanted them to know I'm walking the streets. I wanted them. I wanted to be a role model. I wanted to show them how I take care of children. So I, I, there's nobody. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody love black people as much as I do. Let me tell you something. Everyone, every black person you know that got money and moved out of the hood into Beverly Hills and Bel Air and every place else. They hate black folk. They scared them. They scared them. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. They moved them. When they get that money, they moved to the white neighborhood because they scared somebody black going to knock them in the head. They don't think that God can protect them around their own black people. They move around white people and they feel safe. They go to sleep with their doors open. LeBron James and Jay-Z go to sleep with their doors open out in Bel Air and out in Beverly Hills, but they won't live around black people. So ain't nobody, don't, don't, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you come at me talking about I hate black people. Ain't nobody loving them no more much as I do, but I can say it is. GOP, you have to worry about black people because they ain't going to do nothing but bitch and moan and march. That's all they're going to do and then burn down everything inside. They ain't going to do nothing. They ain't going to do nothing. They give, they give their vote to the white liberals, those promoting homosexuality, those promoting anti-Bible theses. They give their vote and then the white people do all the work. But black folks, they ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> I I've, been, I've been black all my life. They ain't going to do nothing. I can tell you that right now. They ain't going to worry about it. You have to be scared of them. They ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> Except give their vote to these liberal, if you will, abortionists, if you will, pro LGBTQ and anti Bible white folk. So that's what I got to say. What you got to say? I I don't know how to solve this thing that's going on in Washington now, but I can say this: that uh, it ain't what you think it is. It ain't what you think it is. And the old gray mayor ain't what she used to be. But me, I'm James David Manning. Everybody, I'm the Lord's servant.